Okay, so in this video, I'm going to just use some of the things we've learned to describe a particular system, that system being a spin one half particle. And the reason we cho we're choosing a spin one half particle is because when you measure the a component of the angular momentum of a spin one half particle, you only get uh, two possible values. And since there are only two possible values that you measure, there are two basis cats. So those two values will be either h bar over 2 or minus h bar over 2, commonly referred to as uh, spin up and spin down. And this val you know, the, the value h bar over 2 isn't so important. The point is there's two different states. Uh, but basically, h bar is like a fundamental unit of angular momentum, and then it's times 1 half because it's spin 1 half particle. And you either measure it, you know, the magnitude is always h bar over 2, you either measure it to be parallel or anti-parallel to the direction that you're measuring. Uh, but anyway, the, the point is there are two states, so we can expand our state vector as a linear combination of these basis states. And here I've just written plus and minus rather than all of this, because it's just easier to write. And so this is how we will write a, you know, a general expression for our uh, state ket. And we will have these eigenvector eigenvalue equations. So SC acting on plus gives you the eigenvalue corresponding to the plus state, which is h bar over 2 times plus. And then similarly, SC on minus gives you a minus h bar over 2 times minus. And another thing that we will need is an expression for SZ. So we we know how SZ acts on these base cats, but we don't have an explicit expression for it. And we can derive an explicit expression for it from these relations. And the way we do that is, well, we know, I talked about in the first video, that any operator can be written as a linear combination of these basis operators, these of these outer products. And so all we have to do is take this general expression and, uh, and kind of use these equations as constraints for these uh, coefficients. So for example, if I take SC, this expression, and I apply it to my plus ket, uh, what will happen? So I don't think I've talked about how you multiply outer products but uh, onto uh, kets, but it's very easy. You just take the bra on the right, and you do the, form the inner product with the ket. And that'll just be a number, and then you'll just be left with a ket. So for example, if I, you know, you just do this term by term. So the first term, I will have a plus, an inner product of plus with plus, which is just 1. Because we're assuming, again, these uh, basis vectors are orthonormal. And then I'll have a C++ and plus state left over. Then I'll do this state, but I'll have a minus, uh, inner product of a minus with a plus but they're orthogonal, so that's 0. And then I'll have this state, so I'll have a plus with a plus, which is 1, and then I'll have c minus plus with a minus left over. And then uh, similarly, as with this term, since I have a minus here, I'll have an inner product of minus and a plus, so that'll go away. So I'll just have these two terms. And then I want that this should, or I, I've already said that this should be equal to h bar over 2 times plus. So just looking at this equation, we can satisfy this if we choose c++ to be h bar over 2 and c minus plus to be 0. And in a similar way, we can act zz on, or sc on minus, on the minus ket. We get these terms, and again, to satisfy these relations, we would need c plus minus to be 0 and c minus minus to be negative h bar over 2. And so we know all of our coefficients, so we can write our operator as a linear combination of our, of our outer products, which is this. And then uh, we could represent this operator using this matrix. And we'll need this later on. And um, then the last thing is the expectation value. So in a general state, what is the expectation value of the z component of the angular momentum? Well, it's we worked that out last time. It's just the probability of measuring, uh, you know, uh, h bar over two times h bar over two times the probability of measuring minus h bar over two times 
minus h bar of 2. And uh, yeah, so we get this. So I just used the equation from last time. And this is what it works out to be. Again, we'll need this in the next video. And that's all we need, actually, to start talking about uh, the Schrodinger equation and, uh, and actually solving a particular problem.